Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to the Rising STEM webinar series. My name is Nathan Tom. I'm a mechanical engineer at the National Renewable Energy Laboratories, in, which is based in Golden, Colorado. I actually work at one of our satellite campuses called the Flatirons Campus, formerly the National Wind Technology Center, which is located actually in Boulder, Colorado, which is about 30 to 40 minutes north from the Golden Campus. My job title at NREL is Researcher Level 3 Mechanical Engineering, and really all that means is I'm a researcher, staff researcher for NREL, and I work on things that are mechanical or moving. And one of the things that I focus on these days mostly is supporting our Offshore Renewable Energy Technologies Group, where we focus on trying to develop wave, tidal, current energy devices, and I sometimes help out with our Offshore Wind Group. And so we're trying to harvest um, kind of the untapped resource from our oceans and seas. So one of the things that uh, really got me interested in STEM when I was younger is probably just having my parents take me out to the Children's Discovery Museum in San Jose, California, which I grew up. And I really thought this was neat. Most cities have something similar, like a tech museum, and it was just a lot of fun to be able to go and see schematics and exhibits on how things moved, worked, and interconnected in the world. And also one of my ultimate favorite parts of that was having kind of a play section where they had glue guns, they had some screws and hammers, and kind of had like a, a toy box. Uh, they had old paper tubes, they had old CDs, and we were able to kind of build and construct either something that collected water or something that was as tall as we could, trying to make something as high without falling over. And definitely having that kind of hands-on experience, just seeing what worked and what did it and how to iterate on it was a really cool feature that got me interested in trying to pursue that uh, as I got older. And, you know, along with that, when I was younger, I just really liked playing with Transformers, with Legos, with Kinects the idea of being able to take some foundational pieces and build whatever I wanted, uh, try one design, morph it into another design, and, and it really kind of made me want to move into kind of mechanical engineering or the study of moving objects that are connected with linkages or tubes, all types of those things. And also one of my favorite things to do when I was a kid was play a game called Mathador, which my parents actually introduced me to my brothers, mostly to keep us quiet when we were out to eat or at the dinner table. But uh, it's a fun game where you pick one number between like zero and I don't know 200, and then you pick five other tar uh, five other numbers that you use, and these are between zero and ten. And you try to use those five numbers and the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, basic arithmetic operators to try and get that target number. And it was really fun to practice uh, my simple math skills and also compete against my brothers and parents. Um, you know, always some pride in there, trying to beat my brothers. And also what was really fun about it was, uh, you know, you don't have to just stop after one person won the game. There's multiple ways a solution can be made. And so it was fun to kind of wait and compare notes with everyone afterwards to see with how they got and try to explore how they got to that because everyone's mind's different. So everyone's solution is going to be different too. And, you know, STEM got me to where I am today. And, you know, what really inspires me about my work is, again, I grew up in California, pretty close to the coasts, and kind of just developed a love and a appreciation for the oceans. Uh, you always hear it, but, you know, our surface of our planet is covered by about 70% of water. And a lot of it, you know, is really unknown, uncharted. Uh, when you think of actually going just on top and also underneath the ocean, you know, some of the deepest canyons are taller than the Mount Everest, and so it's kind of amazing to think we have that much space, um, such environments that are really different than what we grow up in, uh, what we're used to. Uh, I'm a big fan of scuba diving, and I really feel that sometimes you see some of the deep water creatures and ocean creatures, and you know, they look very different from anything on land, and kind of seems like a really different environment. So we have to, you know, develop skills that kind of address these different physical phenomena and you know why I think my job matters is you know as part of the National Energy Laboratory 
we are trying to find ways of getting energy out of our ocean systems. And given that we have a lot of populations that are actually based pretty close to most of our coasts, means that we can find a power source that can help power cities. At the same time, it can help power some of our, oh, this is my kitty Moshi. Oh, he loves STEM as well. And, um, but it, the ability to power smaller devices such as uh, robotics underneath, uh, monitor monitoring systems on the surface so we can get data on temperature, salinity, um, other types of physical phenomena that then we can give to other organizations such as NOAA or NASA who have models that about our climate and about how our world works. And it'd be really great to be able to provide more information to them uh, for cheaper. In terms of what's next for DOE or the Department of Energy, um, I specifically work mostly with the Water Power Technologies Office, which focuses on getting energy from our Runner River or traditional dams. And then also my side, which we focus more on marine renewable energy technologies. And it is still a pretty new renewable energy source if you compare it to, say, wind or solar, um, which just means that you know there's a potential there that we haven't tapped in. So that's kind of exciting to be on the ground floor, trying to figure out how these work and how these will best integrate into our current and future energy mix. And so, of course, that's you can think big. We're looking at powering cities uh, or towns or even ports where we have shipping come in. And then we're also starting to explore some neat ideas of looking at other ways we can not just power cities, but also just having different things moving in the water. So some of the things we're thinking about, again, is tying marine energy to buoys that can power themselves and take a bunch of measurements, as I mentioned before. We have autonomous underwater vehicles. So these are like gliders or you know basically planes that can fly themselves in underwater rather than in air. And you know those take up a lot of energy, and so if we can find a way to have those powered through marine energy, uh, they can go to way more places in the water and provide us a lot more cool data and photos. We can send to National Geographic, etc. And then you know we're also exploring a lot of other types of ideas, aquaculture, uh, being able to uh, farm fish and other invertebrates and other animals in the ocean, seawater mining, desalinization. Uh, potentially looking at helping for coastal or disaster relief. So if you can imagine like a tsunami or something happened on the coasts, knocked out our most of the traditional water and power sources, marine renewables can hopefully be deployed pretty quickly. That could then provide power and water to relieve some of these stressed outside organizations. You know, why do I think that people should study STEM? Um, I think anyone that's curious about learning in general should pursue it. You know, STEM in specifically, I think, is nice where, you know, everything in the world is kind of interconnected um, physically, electronically. And so, you know, all those are skills that you can obtain studying STEM. I think that STEM also gives you kind of a cool way of looking at problems and uh, tackling them. A uh, really nice framework of looking at a hypothesis or a guess on how something may or may not work and then having a set of steps that you try to follow to understand did it work as I wanted, did it not work, etc. And I think that can be applicable to any aspect of life. And what do I do in my free time these days? Mostly play with my cats and hang out with my fiance. But you know, I do like to try to stay active and bike, play soccer, uh, just run to stay fit. Uh, one of the things that's also uh, I've always, always loved is escape rooms where I think it's kind of a culmination of why I like STEM stuff is you know getting a bunch of different puzzles, math, word, etc. trying to solve them as quickly as possible with different people in a very collaborative format which is really important too and you know just trying to beat the time to get out and also playing with Arduino or Raspberry Pi boards where you're dealing with you know the computer interface and then the sensors and then the Arduino board itself which interconnects between the two so it's a lot of fun if you want to gain an idea of how these things work. So I would suggest if you want more information, go to uh, nrel.gov, or you can follow them on their Twitter handle, at N-R-E-L, or follow the hashtag transforming energy. Thanks for tuning in to this video, and have a great day.